Do you want one of the coolest SUVs in the market and packed full of features that you can even dream of? Well, you can get it with the 2021 Honda Pilot Black Edition. Hi, I'm Justin Thompson here at Smell Honda in Greensburg, PA, here to take you on a test drive for the 2021 Honda Pilot Black Edition. Come on guys, let's check it out. All right guys, in the front of the 2021 Honda Pilot Black Edition, you'll notice the Black Edition badging, the Honda symbol, which is actually the radar for your Ford Collision, brake mitigation system, and your adaptive cruise control. You will have the full LED headlights and the daytime running lights, fog lamps as well. You have the 20 inch black rims, that is part of the Black Edition package. You're actually gonna have the black rims, the black exterior with the black uh, handles, the black roof rails on the top with the black leather interior with the red stitching, which we'll go over in a minute. In the exterior of the back of the vehicle here, you do have the Black Edition badging as well. So this also has the power hands-free tailgate. And all you do, you have to have the key fob on you. You just do a kicking motion. Underneath the back of the tailgate as if you were punting a football, I like to, I like to say. And right here from the back, just pull this, lay that flat. You have the 50-50 uh, split folding seats in the back here. The second row does fold flat. You have the captain's chairs in there. This is a seven passenger. So the Touring Elite and Black Edition will all be the, the seven passenger. I believe you can get a seven and an eight in the uh, Touring. You do have a lot of cargo space down here. Your spare tire will actually uh, lower from underneath the vehicle. But you can store stuff underneath here. If you don't and you need an open area, you can put this down to the lower level. And then this platform can be uh, switched around. So you can have the plastic part on top or the carpeted part. And if you want to put it down, all you have to do is hit this button or you can just do the kick gate again. So if your hands are full, just like that, Pretty cool. So the Smart Pass keyless entry, I do have the key fob in my pocket. All you have to do, you could have this in your purse or your pocket. You just walk up to the car, put your hand through the handle, that will unlock the door, and then go ahead with your travels. And when you get out, you just hit the black button there and that locks up the vehicle. You do have a unlock and lock button on the back tailgate as well. And this vehicle also has what's called a auto walk away function. As long as you have the key fob on you and you walk away from the vehicle, if your hands are full, you don't have to lock it. It will lock automatically for you. And again, you cannot lock your keys in the car. In fact, let me just demonstrate that. I'm going to put the keys in the vehicle and try to lock it. And if you notice, there is no beep. I cannot lock the keys in the car. If you would like to remote start the car, all you do is hit the lock button one time and hold the circular button down for a few seconds until you see the lights blink. Then you can release it and it will blink six times to ensure that it remote started. It actually blinks in the front and the back of the vehicle, and the side mirrors, the turn signals. Um, it will run for 10 minutes and then shut off. If you're really super low on gas, it will not deplete you of gasoline. It will shut off right away. But you can do two 10 minute run times, or if you care to know, within the 10 minute run time, if you do the same pattern again, it'll set it to 20 minutes. Let me demonstrate. And there we go. And now I have it set for 20 minutes. If you ever want to turn it off, all you do is hold the circular button down for a few seconds and it turns the vehicle off. All right, guys, in the back second row of the Pilot Black Edition, you're going to have your uh, climate settings back here for the rear air and heat. Uh, you have your uh, temperature gauge here. You have an auto setting like you do in the front of the vehicle. You can automatically um, it's an automatic climate control in the back. So again, the occupants in the back of the vehicle can set their temperature however they want. There's different modes as well, like the front of the vehicle for face and feet. You do have heated seats in the back. You also have the fan speed as well. The temperature can be locked out from the front. So mom and dad, you can lock the uh, rear air if the kids are playing with it in the back. Um, so again, that can be locked out from the front. You also have your headset uh, ports right here with the volume control. You also have two hands-free wireless headsets here. You do have the remote for the uh, rear entertainment center as well. With the rear entertainment center, this is a neat little uh, thing that we have up on the screen. It's called how much farther. So with Honda, you can actually have set your destination on a trip so that the kids don't have to ask you how much farther do we have. This will actually tell them how much uh, time's left on the trip, where they are in the trip. Uh, pretty cool. 
So you're gonna be able to stream stuff on here as well, like Spotify, um, iHeartRadio. You can uh, put Blu-rays in here, of course, okay? They're gonna play back here for the kids or any occupants in the back. Uh, you do have an HDMI hookup as well, so you can hook up devices. Um, you can stream stuff on here as well, so if you have a device that has a movie or whatnot on there, you can project it up on the uh, Rear Entertainment Center. Also, video games. Yes, so if the kids got the video games and stuff, they can put that up there as well. And then in the back with the Pilot Elite, you actually have the panoramic sunroof. So I'm gonna show you how that opens up. It's from the front, you just pull the sunshade back. So you can check out the stars on, the, uh, on your trips at night. Inside of the 2021 Honda Pilot Black Edition, you're gonna have all the features you possibly can. Uh, of course, power windows, power locks, power outside mirrors. You're gonna have heated power outside mirrors, by the way. So anytime you defrost the rear windshield, you're gonna be able to defrost the outside mirrors as well. You do have power folding mirrors. So you can hit the button up front and fold in both driver and passenger mirror. Hit the button and it folds it out. You do have memory seat position one and two for driver one and two for the uh, seat and the outside mirrors. So they'll adjust accordingly depending on which key fob you actually use. So this says driver one on it. And if whoever in the household has driver two, when they use the smart pass, it'll actually adjust the seats and the mirrors automatically to that setting. The tilt wheels on the side, you release it. You can tilt it up and down, in and out. It's telescopic as well. You can lock it in. On the left-hand side of the dash over here, you do have an econ button. You can use that to maximize your fuel efficiency out on the highway. I wouldn't use it when you're going up the mountains too much. You want to make sure you have all the power that you can, but it is definitely going to save you gas mileage out on the long trips. Over on the left, on, down below, you have the uh, parking sensors uh, button. When that green light is on, that means the parking sensors are on in the front and the rear. You also have part of Honda sensing on the side here, some buttons down below. One of them has a car that looks like it's going off the road with a green light. That's your road departure mitigation. So that, if you want it on, you want to see that green light. What that does is it will actually apply braking power out on the road. It uses a camera in front of the windshield to map out the lines on the road above 45 miles an hour and up to 90 miles an hour. If you start to drift or it detects that you're departing the lane, it'll assist your steering and actually apply braking power to keep you on your intended path. So that's the difference between road departure and then there's something also called lane keep assist system, which I'll go over in a second. But the two other buttons on the uh, side of the dash here, the one above the green light, uh, your road departure mitigation, would be your forward collision brake mitigation button. That's a button to turn that off. That's the radar that will sense if you're going to have an impact and brake you automatically. Honda gives you a reason to turn it off or a way to turn it off. In my opinion, I would never turn that off. Uh, also, you have your stability control button over here, your vehicle stability assist. That can be manually disengaged if you're trying to gain traction in a sticky situation like snow or mud. If you ever do change your uh, intelligent traction management system for your all-wheel drive system here, in the mud or sand setting, it'll automatically disengage stability control for that very reason, to allow for better traction to get out of the snow or the mud. And again, you just hit this button here and it would bring up the menu and then you can switch between normal or snow or mud and sand. And if you notice, if I leave it in mud or sand, it'll disengage your stability control. And again, automatically for you. And when you get out of the sticky situation, you could put it back into normal or snow and it will re-engage stability control for you automatically. As far as the lights, you have automatic lights. You can keep it on auto all the time. You don't ever have to worry about chance and draining your battery by leaving your lights on. It'll automatically turn them on at night, turn them off during the day. It'll give you high beams at night as well, automatically, and they'll turn them off automatically as well. You do have the fog lamps, and if you kept it in an auto setting, it would turn those off as well. The uh, windshield wipers, you do have an auto setting as well for this. So you have automatic rain sensing wipers too. Really cool stuff. You have the 3.5 liter V6 engine with 280 horsepower. Now this is the nine speed automatic transmission with the push button transmission up here, okay? So you have park, reverse, neutral, and drive. And you also have sport, which is that S button. And all you would have to do is hit the button again to transfer it from drive to sport. Sport just gives you a peppier feel on the back road. It's more of a car enthusiast kind of uh, uh, part of the transmission. However, if you're in drive or sport, you can use your paddle shifters to shift up and down in gear. You have all the controls on your steering column to pretty much navigate 
as much as you could on the touch screen without having to touch the, the screen. You can do everything from here. You can toggle back and forth between presets on your radio, Sirius XM satellite radio, which you have free for three months. Uh, you're able to change from this home button what you display up here on the screen. So whenever you have music up here and you're on the music note, you can scroll up and down between your different music media. So if you have a USB port that's plugged in or if you are connected with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can use your iTunes or Spotify, any type of music. And again, you can switch it on the fly while you're driving. All you have to do once you want to select something is either just let it go or hit enter. And then again, from there, you can scroll left or right and change your presets. And then you also have your volume control as well. You do have your voice command buttons for your Bluetooth connection. However, if you're going to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you will be connected into this USB device with the phone icon on the uh, outside shell here. And what you'd be, be able to do is do a long hold on the voice command button to bring up Siri or OK Google to contact anybody in your contacts list, text message anybody hands-free, or even use your maps as navigation. So uh, if you have your Google Maps or your Apple Maps or even Waze is a navigation app that I use, that is a supported app that will show up on the touchscreen. Again, all you do is plug in your phone to the USB device with the phone icon and everything will display on the touchscreen. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Over on the right hand side of the dash, you're going to have some cool features. The other part of Honda Sensing. So if I hit this main button, it's going to bring up these two acronyms on the dash. ACC, which is Adaptive Cruise Control, and LKAS, which is Lane Keep Assist System. Now, Lane Keep sounds a lot like road departure mitigation, okay? But here's where they differ. Road departure is gonna apply the braking power and kinda, you'll feel the wheel kinda stiffen up whenever you're going through turns. And Lane Keep, if you ever wanna use it, you hit this button right here on the right, the right side of the steering wheel and two dotted lines come up on the dash. That's to let you know that the camera is ready to map out the lines in the road, even on a highway. So if you did start to drift out of your lane, when those dotted lines are solid white, that's how you know it's ready to assist. And again, if it does, it'll just vibrate the wheel and just slightly pull you back into the lane, either left or right, whichever direction you're drifting. Adaptive cruise control will brake and accelerate the vehicle automatically without you doing anything. So if you can imagine you're out on the highway and you have your cruise control set at 65 miles an hour and you come upon a vehicle going slower than you, it won't hit the back of the vehicle. It will actually slow up. When you get in the fast lane and nobody's in front of you, it'll pop you back up to the previous speed that you had set. All right, let's take it out on the road. This is the blind spot monitoring. See this light right here on the, uh, near the A pillar there. That's indicating that somebody's in my blind spot there. Now, if, so if I have my turn signal on, you'll hear the beep as well. So it's going to blink on either side if somebody's in your blind spot. And again, if you have your turn signal on, it will beep inside of the cabin and give you a second warning not to move into that lane. So the Ford Collision Brake Mitigation System, if you do not brake in time, it's going to calculate distance and speed. So for instance, on that back road there, I was coming up and that guy was stopped in front of me. It's going to beep and indicate brake on the dash for me to let me know to brake, and if I don't do it myself, it's gonna apply the braking power automatically. And again, that radar in front, that's that Honda symbol in the front of the pilot that's calculating distance and speed all the time. So even if with your adaptive cruise control, if you have that set and somebody would cut you off, you would feel the braking system start to apply. So up above here with the power moonroof, you have a Honda Link button and also an assist button. That Honda Link button is your Honda Link concierge. You can uh, get in touch with Honda and they can schedule a last minute flight for you, book, book a hotel room, stuff like that. Also, the assist button is if you're in an accident, God forbid, you're unable to call emergency services. You could pull this down and hit that button and it would call 911 for you automatically. A couple things to notice up front, you do have the heated seats and the cooled seats for the driver and the passenger. And again, you have the heated seats for the uh, captain's chairs in the back, like I mentioned before. Part of the black edition package, you have the black leather interior with the red stitching, and the driver passengers are embroidered with the black edition stitching. A couple things to note while we're at the uh, light here, you do have the Blu-ray player obviously is right up front here, so that's going to control for the rear entertainment center. You do have a uh, wireless charging port here. This off button below the intelligent management traction system for your all-wheel drive. That is the idle engine shutoff button. So 
when you start to get in traffic and uh, you're idling, what will happen is the engine will shut off. Now there's a specific amount of power that's stored to restart the engine. So you're not hurting your alternator or starter of the vehicle. But if you don't like the way that that works, you could hit this button and auto engine idle stop is engaged. So that will not shut off the engine. So I have my adaptive cruise control I'm about to set right now. So I'm above 25 miles an hour. I can hit set on my cruise control and now it's set at 60 miles an hour. And I can increase or decrease the sensitivity level of the radar by hitting the outside button here. That's more sensitive and then the car icon's coming closer to me as I tap the button, that's less sensitive. So I'm bridging the gap between me and the car in front of me. If you hold the plus button or hold down the minus button for a few seconds, you'll increase or decrease your cruise speed by five mile an hour increments. If you just tap the button once or twice up or down, it'll increase or decrease at one mile an hour at a time. Right now, I am not on the brake and the vehicle is keeping a safe distance. It's tough to notice on the uh, camera, but the vehicle is actually braking and accelerating. It's uh, doing this all automatically. And again, it's using the radar in front of the vehicle to do that. You have a three year, 36,000 mile comprehensive warranty. That's all the bells and whistles, all the electronics in the vehicle and you have a five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. That's your engine, drivetrain, transmission, and your all-wheel drive system. All the major driving components of the vehicle. Good thing to think of it is the only thing that aren't covered are wear items, like tires, brakes, rotors, stuff like that. So when you're above 45 miles an hour and you're stationary in the middle of a lane and you don't have the windshield wipers going full speed because that would uh, go in front of the lens, that would definitely cancel out lane keep assist. They're solid white. So now I know if I start to drift, It'll actually vibrate the wheel and pull me back into the lane. I'll demonstrate that again. I'll go to the right here. Now I wouldn't suggest doing this, but if you took your hands off the wheel, you would literally pinball down the highway. It would say steering required up on the dash, but the, the sensors are keeping me centered in the lane the whole time. Again, I do not recommend hands-free driving. Just wanted to uh, demonstrate how this works. With the Black Edition, you do have the standard navigation system. It's a Garmin-based navigation system. And just rest assured that you do have your um, navigation system with your Apple CarPlay Android Auto. So you have two Navi systems, one through your phone, and then you have the uh, standard navigation Garmin system here too. So the all-wheel drive system, as I touched earlier on how it disengages the vehicle stability control, how the all-wheel drive system works for Honda, and this is what separates Honda from most of the market out there, the all-wheel drive system, you don't have to touch any buttons. You're in the normal setting, and if you do want to switch between normal and snow, you can on the fly, just like that. So if you come upon snow, and what that does is that will more evenly distribute the power to all four wheels. But in the normal mode, and I'll show you the all-wheel drive torque system right here. If I give it gas, it's gonna give equal amount of power and actually more power to the front wheels. So on a dry day like today, it's gonna to act somewhat like a front wheel drive vehicle. So right off the bat, and you'll see whenever we get going here, after we get the green, it'll equal the power to all four wheels right away and then immediately back off on the rear wheels. So again, on a dry day, in some situations when you're coasting, you're gonna be about 90% power of the front wheels and about 10 to the rear, 80, 20. Again, it's gonna distribute the power where it's needed. Front to back, side to side. So if you're going around a corner and a turn, you'll notice more uh, power to the outside wheel. So those little blue lines indicate the power that you're getting to each wheel. All right, guys, the backup camera. So if you have a trailer hitch or anything like that, you're gonna love what I'm gonna go over here. But if you're really bad at parking, kind of like I am, this really helps out. So put it in reverse and you hit the button back, you're gonna have your backup camera and here's the display on the touchscreen. You're gonna have three camera angle views. The wide angle view, so you can see traffic coming from either side. Before I go any further, this is the uh, blind spot monitoring, the cross monitor detection that uses your blind spot to indicate if any vehicles are coming from behind us. And then this is the bird's eye view and it will beep and indicate in color coordination when you're getting close to a vehicle or an object and it'll actually increase the intervals of the beeping. So let me demonstrate. 
The dynamic guidelines change color to give your projected angle into a spot. You can change the view to more of a concentrated view. And as I'm backing up here, and then this one is a straight down view. You can back right up against the curb without hitting it. Or if you're lining up a hitch. So again, that's really great whenever you're doing that. I've, I've jumped out of a vehicle a bunch of times in the past and tried to line up the hitch and it was a pain. So this will make it so easy to do that. And that's the test drive on the new 2021 Honda Pilot Black Edition. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please visit us online at smellhonda.com or visit us right here on Route 30 in Greensburg and ask for me, Justin Thompson. Thanks for watching.